My name is Neil Tomba, and I'm a pastor from Dallas, Texas. For the last 18 years, I've dreamed of riding a bicycle across the United States. Today, our country feels more divided than ever, and I was determined to spend 33 days biking across America to learn how to talk to others about important things in a way that made them feel respected, heard, and valued. This is The Listening Road. Today we are riding to Santa Rosa, New Mexico, about a 124 mile ride, our longest ride of the trip so far. We had some nasty bikes yesterday. Go. I've got your chain clean. Do you want to oil it yourself or do you? Trust me. I also made a couple adjustments to your bike just to make sure it slows you down a little so you don't go so fast. So Wes, I've oiled it and I'm letting it soak in on for you and you can wipe it. Okay. This morning, um, I'm really aware that, increasingly aware that the pace we've been going has been um, really high. And I want to be careful about not killing our team. I'm also aware that today's day 10, and I thought this was going to be a day off. And our day off is not till day 12. So we've been going 10 days straight. The other thing that's going on at day 10 for me is how unpredictable my body has been. And it it, it really uh, reminds me of a phrase that... um, A lady in our church uses and has taught a lot of people at our church, we are limited human beings. I don't know what one day to the next holds. And that's true about life. Today, I want to recognize our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. As we started today's ride, storms surrounded us and we had a strong tailwind all morning. The roads were smooth and the wind continued throughout the afternoon. I'm telling you, we were loving life out on the open road. Thanks to the tailwind, we reached our destination by 4 p.m. way earlier than usual. I'll tell you something that happened that I was thinking about is we stopped at a um, convenience store and a lady came up to us and just talked, never asked a question, just kept talking, 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 kind of preaching at us. And it sounded kind of out there, and I'm really not here to judge that. But as we were riding away, I was wondering how many times did I talk and talk and talk in zeal to tell somebody something about Jesus and didn't listen. So it makes me want to do a good job of just being curious and hearing people's stories. As I took a minute to look around, I saw two guys grilling burgers, so I decided to see what they were up to. Are you guys professionals? They introduced themselves as Fermin and Jimmy, and they were grilling burgers as part of a summer school food service initiative for neighborhood kids and families. Uh, It happened four years ago. I lost a seven and 11 year old. I had two boys. They didn't make it in a car accident. And uh, the guy was was texting on his phone. He got on the wrong side of the road. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, we make, no. sorry to say this guy. But Thank you for I'm, being honest with us, man. And if you guys go to to Vegas, the road to go to Vegas in 84, Yeah. I put a big heart for them. And, and uh, that's a uh, marker 68 and 69, between marker 68 and 69. Wow, for me. 
and you're here yeah, loving well, on I kids, love it, man. man. I love it, man. Hey, buddy. So I love it, man. I love, I love this. I love ah. it. Man. I know it's hard. I know. I, I, every day I go to I go to work. I go to the school and go, hey, my kids are not here, but hey, I'm here, man. You know what I mean? I'm here for them. Whoa. Yeah, and then, and then the, the worst thing, my wife, my wife was dispatcher when that happened. She's she the was the dispatcher. Whoa. How is she, how is your wife doing? She's doing good. She started she started a, a, a job about a month ago. Really started back to getting back to reality. After four and years. Wow. And I told wow. her, and I told her uh, if you work, it, 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 it relieves the pain a little bit. But the pain's always going to be there. You know what I mean? No matter what, the pain's always going to be there. That's right. So, Seven and eleven. Yeah, I have three cool. daughters for me and two grandchildren. Man. I can't imagine. So for me, gosh, I just got to jump in on that. What got you through that for me? What do you think got you through? I mean, you're here serving people. I think just, just believing in God, you know? Just believing in God and, and taking one day at a time and, and things are going to get better, you know? Still here for a reason. Yeah. I don't know why, but I'm, no, really. I'm cooking like I'm cooking for a bunch of kids now. Man. It's amazing. If you saw somebody going through a tragedy, how would you encourage them to lean on Jesus in the midst of well, I tell what him would you come, tell him? I tell him come with me, we go cry together. I, 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 I'm a baby crying. I mean, you, you know, for me, you know what? That to me sounds like you being Jesus with skin on. And I think you're being like Jesus for them when, when you weep. And then like, I, I think, see, God sent you here for a reason. See, you're one of those things for them. That's right. Yes. That's right, man. You know what I mean? And I want you to say uh, something too, like, and you know, when people are on the phone, out there, on the, on the road, you hear me? Okay, you hear that? We're gonna, we're, we wanna make that's sure to say want, it. So for me, I'm just gonna turn the camera and you say it how you wanna say yeah. it, okay? I just appreciate it. Nobody would drive using their phone. That would save some other, other people's life and other kids' life. So remember that. Okay, brother. Wow. Vila and Caroline were talking with a young woman named Sarah Kate. I sat next to them, polished off my first burger, and listened to Sarah Kate talk. She was the liaison for the summer food program. So, Sarah Kate, you seem pretty passionate about this. I am, I am. <laughs> uh, tell, me about, tell me a little bit about maybe where that passion came from, or tell me yeah. a little bit about that. Um, I'd love to. It's I could make it a very long story, but I won't. Okay. Um, I grew up in a you know strongly middle class family i didn't i didn't grow up super poor and i wasn't very wealthy i was very middle ground um but i did grow up with very poor eating habits and i ended up in high school my sophomore year weighing a little over 200 pounds and i realized wow something needs to change because i'm wow. not healthy <laughs> and i was 16 years old at the time wow and so i saw a dietitian and she taught me the very bare bones basic concepts of nutrition and I was able, by the time from sophomore year to senior year, I was able to lose 70 pounds, and I've kept it off mostly throughout my college and adult years, <laughs> um, up and down a little bit. But I saw the importance of nutrition. If you're missing proper nutrition early in life, it really sets you back for later in life. So you and Caroline have a similar story. Do we? Well, I actually um, recently lost 50 pounds. Right? That's, yeah, <laughs> no. Good job. I just love your story because you have such a passion for these kids and it's just, it's so beautiful. And so, mm -hmm. thank you. Props to you because it really is hard to, to lose all the weight and keep it off. So yeah. I can definitely see where I was abusing my, you know, my body um, as, a, as a teenager, um, just eating, eating, eating constantly. And I wasn't um, being productive in any way. You wow. know, it was, I was putting all this energy into my body and doing nothing with it. Yeah. So not only did that lead to weight gain, but it led to depression. It led to sadness and uh, hating who I was and mm. not appreciating myself for the, the human that I am, you know, the person that I was created to be. I, I didn't appreciate that person, but I do now. And I take much wow. better care of her now. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Sir, Thank you so much. You are really. welcome. Uh, there's a river that went one. That's part of my story. Mine's on forever. <laughs> yeah, oh, I, part of my story. so I've been I'll, wondering, can you tell us about it? I, can, I, I, I just didn't figure you'd want to. I won't go ahead. I not go into too much detail, <laughs> but um, it's, a, it's a line from a song by Lord Huron. Um, it's the first line, 
and it goes, oh, there's a river that winds on forever. And that's where I ended my tattoo with a semicolon. And the next line reads, I'm gonna see where it leads. Because I've had my personal struggles with um, those kinds of, you know, those depression and, and things like that. And uh, I know that my story is not over. A semicolon tattoo is often worn by people who have contemplated or attempted suicide. It hit home when Vila mentioned that one of our daughters had attempted suicide. She also has a tattoo of a semicolon. I'm assuming that's your daughter too. Yes. Yes. Yeah. It's tough stuff. It is. Yeah, we've been there. There's a community of people that understand. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and she's doing well. Good. I am too. I'm, I'm proud to say that I'm doing well with... Uh, the help of my therapist, medication, the Lord guiding me, you know, I'm doing so much better. And Good. Yeah, that's my biggest hope is to make an impact on somebody, at least one person in my life. Mm -hmm. We just met Sarah Kate, but here we were talking about life's most difficult moments and how we can triumph on the other side. I was really happy to have shared this day together with our team. And it has been such an encouragement listening to people's stories and seeing what God is doing all across the country in people's lives, even in the midst of pain and heartache. Today, we ride from Santa Rosa, New Mexico. We plan on riding about 107 miles until we reach our destination in Adrian, Texas. In 10 days, I've had five different physical issues going on. And last night I went to bed and I started my um, worry process, projecting out the future of, oh, what if I can't ride in two days? What if I can't ride in three days? And I just had to catch myself and say, you know what I, I'm, I'm sure of? I can get on the bike tomorrow and I don't know about the next day. And just reminded of the, the wisdom of Jesus who says, each day has enough trouble of its own. Don't worry about the next day, live in the present today. Caroline and Wes helped me keep going and to distract me from the pain of my newly forming saddle sores. I'd seen Caroline deal with this same thing, and now I couldn't help but be impressed with her. She never once complained. Undoubtedly, she is way tougher than me. The day grew hotter than ever. My shirt and my riding bibs were soaked in sweat. I was in agony, and if my problem doesn't improve soon, I'm starting to wonder if I can go the distance. It was a welcomed relief when we reached Cap Rock and the high point of our trip that day. Wes and I were able to just coast for the rest of the time and enjoy the view. That evening, we pulled up to a truck stop close to the Texas border. Yuna struck up a conversation with an older couple, and soon she led them over to the table where we were sitting. Their names were Jim and LaDonna, and they were immediately fun to talk with. So awesome. I my wife at a dumpster. Yeah. OK, we've got to clarify this. <laughs> OK, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> he, was, so, he was in Naval Academy, and okay. I was uh, going through uh, school, and I knew his parents, and I was just taking the trash out. That's all. Okay. So you, were you, where, you were at the where Naval were you, Academy in Annapolis, in, Maryland? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where we're heading to. Yeah. yeah. Spent four years there. Wow. Yeah. Graduated in 1972. 
and uh, been was in the Navy for 21 years, submarines, uh, commanded a submarine, uh, served in four others, been around the world, submerged, been under the ice cap. Uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. So Thank cool. you for serving. Yeah, you bet. This is just the kind of thing we want to just hear from people. <laughs> okay, What's the coolest so thing you've seen in that submarine? An amazing teamwork. Ah, how many people were in it? About 150. Um, 150. Yeah. yeah. There are two different types of submarines. I served in both. One is an attack submarine. The other is a missile carrying submarine. Mm -hmm. And uh, so one carries carries 150. The other about 170. But yeah, it's a it's a Thing. And when you're gone and underwater for 285 days, you get to know each other real good. <laughs> yeah. So did you not get claustrophobic? No, you never stayed on a submarine long if you were claustrophobic. As you look at the world today, what's your, like, what's one of your big concerns or just things that just kind of... I think the world is much better off now than it ever has been. Uh-huh. People are healthier. You know, there are a lot of, there's a lot of sadness, a lot of bad stuff going on. But if you study history and you look at the condition of the human species over history, it's never been better. Never. Wow. The average lifespan in Rome in 400 AD was 35. What kind of life can you lead with a lifetime that short? You know? And it was, it's been constant battle, constant war. You know, we've had more peace in our lifetimes than most generations ever before. Wow. Even with all the crazy stuff that's going Even on. Even with the crazy stuff going on. I worry most about the people who are homeless, yeah. for whatever reason, wherever they are, um, because we should be able to do better in improving the human condition than we are, because we're not focused on all the right things. If you take a look at what we grew up in in the 50s, compared to what our children are growing up in now. The opportunities are incredible. So it's, it's what you make of those opportunities. How old are you? No, you're not. <laughs> How old do you think she was? I was thinking she 18, was 19. 19. Yeah. Well, Caroline, you enjoy that. Crushing all these miles. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I mean, you get, every, it's, it's a really good time to be alive. Your stuff. Okay, okay, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. In light of all you've seen and the stuff you're working on, for you, where does God come in that picture or faith at all? Or just, what do you think about that? That's a really good, I think that's a really good question. Um, to, to us, we're Christians. Uh -huh. Other people are of different faiths because if you look again at history, the, the Asian continent that did not develop at the same time the European continent developed. So there's a difference in their their belief in a superhuman being or not a human being. You know, so there's there's significant difference between India and China. Difference yeah. between China and India and European. And we get most of ours from European which Indians, our American Indian heritage, um, has its own beliefs uh, of the origin of man, for example. But almost all of them have still this supreme, there's a supreme power or being over. How else can you explain why we are here and the dinosaurs aren't? How else can you explain why we can think and create and no other being can? Right? So, so there's undeniably a power higher than we, whatever you call that power, whatever you believe in, it doesn't matter. We're all on the same planet. We're all gonna live for a certain period of time. Take advantage of the time. Make the best of it. And have fun. And keep that smile on your face. <laughs> and you, you need to start aging. It was a gift to hear Jim's perspective on the world that he had gained through his own experiences in life. After our meal, we finally reached our destination of Adrian, Texas, and stopped at a unique roadside motel. Adrian is the halfway point of Route 66. As the sun was setting, I met a younger looking couple named Vic and Aida, who lived in a corner room of the motel. They explained that they were both from Armenia and had lived in Texas for the past five months. And Vic, tell us about your story. Uh, 2016, I was in Armenia, 
and uh, protesting for the freedom. Mm -hmm. And uh, I saw her. <laughs> I asked her if she's going to marry me. And <laughs> we got married and we decided to live in this beautiful place in Texas. Vic, you said you were protesting for freedom. Yes. yes. Can you tell us a little bit about that? I was a soldier on, in mm -hmm. Armenia when uh, 1992 uh, the Turks attacked to Armenia. Oh, you were in the war? Yes. Yeah. Wow. And, uh, and we just fighting for uh, freedom. Wow. Armenians were religious people. And it was 1915 genocide because we are Christians and Turkey was genocide. So, About uh, one million uh, people died. Yeah. So you guys have ancestors who have suffered a lot, correct? Yeah. Some hard memories. Yes. I asked if I could pray for them, for their future and families, and for freedom in the country they had left. As we said our goodbyes, I headed back to my room to ice my saddle sores. I couldn't help but think how exciting it is to meet new people and that encouraging and meaningful connections can be made when we just take time to listen. The next morning, Vic and Aida joined us for breakfast. They talked throughout the entire meal. Then Aida took Vila back to their motel room so she could see the things she had brought from Armenia. Um, so tell me about this. Uh, this is... Um um, the name is in Armenian Hung and um, with fire. Mm -hmm. uh, so, <laughs> and, like incense. And it's from mm -hmm. Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Oh, from Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Yeah, yeah, Jerusalem. And we use it every time in, in our church. Mm -hmm. Can you smell it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yes. I love that. Yeah, and I love that the, 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 the smell that you said how it kind of brings you into the holy presence. That's beautiful. I love that. Yeah, it was clear Aida really wanted to connect with others and tell her story. After we said our goodbyes, I thought about all that Vic and Aida had been through. They'd faced many challenges, yet they were so quick to be warm and open and even having a hopeful outlook. It got me thinking about the word hope. Hope moves us forward towards something new. Hope says things can get better, even if there's no proof yet. Hope prompts us to open up or be open to listening because we might find common ground or inspiration. Maybe hope is an important part of openness, the openness we need to take down walls and really hear each other. Today is going to be a shorter day as we ride from Adrian, Texas to our resting destination of Wallace Ranch near Canyon, Texas. Near Amarillo, we came to the strange site known simply as Cadillac Ranch. Ten old Cadillacs upended and buried nose first in the dirt. The collection of vehicles is meant to be a funky, eclectic art project open to all. Visitors are encouraged to bring spray paint cans and add their own graffiti to the vehicles. Go, be free. Here goes Vila. Fearless. I hope, step gingerly. There might be metal or something out there. Make it neat, Lee. Make it nice. Conversations, coast to coast. Vila, champions pay the price. Your fans are loving this, Vila. Nice. I did it. Look at that. As we wandered around, I met a young couple named Russell and Nina. They were from St. Louis, Missouri, and headed for the Grand Canyon. He was a 32-year-old truck driver, and she was a 19-year-old cake decorator at a bakery. How did you hear about um, 
Cadillacs in the mud. She actually. Yeah, actually, yeah. we were planning this road trip, and I was just looking for neat stuff to see because I want to see as you know as much as we can while we're out here. In all honesty, I think the most important things to me are animals and just seeing seeing everything that I can. You know, I feel like I'm wasting my time if I'm not going to see things. I uh, that's cool. Agree. So Nina, what kind of? You sound like my daughter. Um, what kind of um, animals do you like? Well, in my house, we have kind of a zoo. It's just a bunch of dogs and cats. But I personally have one dog and one cat. And then I love them all. Anyone okay. that I see is mine, you know. <laughs> okay. I'll care for it. <laughs> I'm going to ask you guys one of these questions I've been asking people. Do you have anybody in your life that you talk about things like faith or God or spiritual things with anybody in your life? Do you have those kind of conversations with? Well, none of them are really too intense, to be honest. Uh, I have this friend, Sophia, back at back in St. Louis, and she's really the kind of person that's really kind of a spiritual soul, kind of. I feel like it's very important to be connected with everything and to care and just to show love to everybody because that's just... That's what it's all about. Yeah, because yeah. otherwise the world would just be a terrible place, and this wouldn't be happening. Like, what's what your I, idea what of that? I think it, like, uh, it's mainly like, you know, like a lot of people view things as like it's God who's in control of everything, but I've always felt that Maybe it's not God. Maybe there is a God, but it's not the one that we all see it as. Mm -hmm. It could be a higher power still, but not the one that that's portrayed to be. Mm -hmm. That's basically what I'm... Because I, I don't know what it is. I have no idea. You know? It's definitely something you feel, though. Yeah. What do you think about this? <laughs> Maybe God could be a person that's who is bigger than any of us and beyond our understanding. I feel like that's definitely something that I don't think is very far-fetched. And I think there's definitely a little bit of that in everybody. It's like kind of that connection that I was talking about with other people. Because you can connect with anybody if you just try to see that other part in someone, you know? Absolutely. Nina, you know, I was riding behind our vehicle this morning. And uh, every day we say, what are we learning? And one of the things I said is, with these conversations we had this morning, is that I was shocked about how everybody wants to connect. It's yeah. exactly what you were saying. It's definitely something that people want and need. It's mm -hmm. just it's just something to make up the world a better place. We're all here together, so. <laughs> well, y'all made me happy today by getting to visit with you guys. You guys made us yeah, happy yeah, too. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you. Awesome. Nina was also an artist and made stickers. She pulled one from her purse to give to me, and immediately I stuck it Come on the front here. of my bike. Get, uh, let's get a picture of Nina and Russell sticker. were very open, not just to tell their story, but to hear more about the story of Jesus. I wish I could have had more time to talk with them. Despite my saddle sores, I felt good. I was riding strong. Everybody we had met seemed so friendly, and we'd had several emotional highs already today. And overall, the day's riding was going without a hitch. But then Wes got a phone call. All right, dude, I'm torn. <laughs> My friend and sister can't breathe anymore. <laughs> I've taken her to see you. A good family friend of his had just been put in the hospital, diagnosed with pneumonia. She was in the intensive care unit and they didn't know if she would live. We all saw the gravity of the situation immediately. Wes, would you do me a favor? If there is something you need from either of us, even if it's just to say, hey, can we just have a moment to cry? Well, I don't know, whatever. Please let us know. Well, we're gonna ride up in front of that car for a little bit. Okay, go ahead. Later that afternoon, we cycled through the Paladuro Canyon. At a roadside lookout, we pulled off to view the terrain, and all around us was the rugged beauty of the painted mesas. It was so beautiful. Whoa. Our destination of Canyon, Texas was coming into view. The past 10 hours had been such a roller coaster ride of ups and downs. It was so beautiful connecting with people today. 
and we passed fields of thistles in bloom. And I was just thinking for miles about those thistles and how beauty and pain coexist in our world today. And that part of the challenge is to live in the reality of one moment we can be just rejoicing over connections we've made with people and people we met at Cadillac Ranch and just had the, the, the funnest time talking to this little young couple. Connections we made back in the motel we stayed in last night and got to keep talking and talking with those people and the beauty of those things. But the reality of the pain of disconnections, the reality is that there's still gonna be wars and suffering and like Wes's friend, people getting sick. And I really do believe the tricky thing of life is to embrace all of that together. And when I read about Jesus in the Gospels, I look at a Savior who can go to a tomb and weep and go to a party with tax collectors and um, embrace the full gamut of human emotions. And just sitting here right now, feeling the cool breeze and listening to the birds, I feel really thankful. Tomorrow we're gonna take a day off and we're um, gonna rest in the goodness of a God who gives us all these emotions and all these beautiful connections.